There's no denying that naturally weathered stone has a unique beauty and character. But even as we allow our buildings to grow old gracefully, it's important to monitor the changes that occur, so damaging decay can be identified at the earliest stage possible. To achieve this, the Queen's University team have produced a comprehensive toolkit of minimally invasive new technologies. We started a monitoring process using this technology in, in 2006 on two colleges in Oxford, uh, Worcester College and New College. And we have gone back every year since 2006 and scanned individual blocks on walls in very high resolution using this technology. We're able to then create a three-dimensional model of change from year to year and this helps us find out where and hopefully why the building stone is deteriorating. Initially we thought there would be very little change on these surfaces but what we, what we have actually found is that quite a lot of material is being lost from these blocks per annum and we were able to calculate that volume loss using this very high resolution technology. Well this is our terrestrial LiDAR system, uh, commonly known as a 3D laser scanner. And LiDAR stands for light, distance and ranging. And what this equipment does is basically laser scan large structures uh, by firing pulses of lasers at the structure and measures the time of flight of that laser beam to leave the machine, hit the surface and come back to the machine. And we can use it to capture very small parts of buildings or whole structures in complete 3D, both inside and outside. This is the facade of the Elmwood Hall in Belfast, mapped by LiDAR. But perhaps even more impressive is this 3D LiDAR scan of one of Northern Ireland's unique natural icons, the Marble Arch Caves in County Fermanagh. Again, repeated scans at scheduled intervals can document changes with pinpoint accuracy. One of the main physical effects of algae growing on the surface of stone is that it can reduce surface permeability and also keep moisture in. Uh, so we want to monitor that. We do that by putting compressed air into these chambers and then it moves to this gun uh, and software on the computer knows what the pressure in the gun is. We then fire the air into the, the wall and we can get a reading of permeability uh, as the software reads how the air pressure decays. We would tend to map at the surface of the stone um, maybe a diagonal transect across and then some of the corners uh, and sides uh, and if we do that then we can take it into for example uh, GIS software, Geographical Information System software and map it spatially and see how it varies over the, over the surface. Daniel is looking at the stone surface using a thermal camera. Um, I guess when we say thermal camera we probably think about temperature but we're interested in moisture of course and we can use uh, the thermal data as a proxy to try and understand uh, what moisture inside the stone is doing um, because obviously the temperature and the moisture are linked so for example uh, moisture might cool the stone surface down and that will be picked up by the thermal camera um, so we can pick up drying patterns on the surface that are related to for example the string course or the plinth uh, where moisture might be collected along the, the top of the string course or the top of the plinth and that will come out in the thermography. It's very handy for us to be able to detect the early onset of algal growth and we can do that with an instrument called a, a colorimeter or a spectrophotometer and what this instrument does is enables us to quantify uh, colour change on a surface. So I can just show you how simple the colorimeter is to use. If we put it up to the stone surface and pull the trigger, this is a red sandstone so it gives us a very high reading, 8.77 uh, on the green to red spectrum. But if we move it to an area of stone covered with green algae and take another reading, it has shifted way down to minus 0.57 um, and that's a major shift towards green on the spectrum. And that shows how sensitive the piece of equipment is uh, and the value th that it has in monitoring surface change over time. Why we do that is to be able to 
inform conservation decision making. For example, treatments on stone, biocides or water repellents that might hold off algal colonisation for a longer period of time, saving building owners a lot of money. And finally, in valuable heritage buildings, when the only way to monitor deep internal changes would be too invasive, conservators can turn to the data from Queen's dedicated test site in Fermanagh. What we're interested in out here in Derry Gonnelly is really looking at stone in an environment that's already very wet and we can use this as a kind of model for what could happen say in cities in like, like Belfast or, or elsewhere uh, if the climate there was to get similar to, to Derry Gonnelly. In terms of, of, of monitoring especially the growth of algae on buildings what we really need to do is to take samples at, at different time periods and we don't want to take the samples off our very expensive big blocks of stone. So our co-workers which are a group of researchers at Oxford University have exposed kind of smaller tablets of stone on all four sides of, of, of the building and the idea is that these will be brought in, you can see one's already been taken in at different time periods to see what species are colonising the stones. Obviously if we, if we want to replicate conditions on the building we, we don't want to put too many sensors on the surface of the building. So what we've done is, is constructed this hut and we can go inside and most of the sensors are embedded from behind. We're experimenting in a way uh, as part of the, the project to see what are the best kind of sensors and in fact we've just got some money to work on this stone in particular to develop fibre optic sensors to, to put in here so it's something that has never really been tried anywhere else in the world. We, we are the first people to develop these sensors. From the smallest samples to the largest buildings, the data delivered by this ever-increasing range of technology can now be integrated to create a detailed and accurate picture of the changes that are occurring in building stone. Vital information for architects, conservation practitioners and all who care about the future of our built heritage. Music